Our first um, speaker now is Scott Williamson, Managing Director of Blackstone Minerals. Thanks, Kathleen. Thanks, Peter. And thanks to Dave for the Best Dressed Award. Not sure how I can win that when I'm actually colourblind, but anyway, we've got some work to do as an industry. Um, this is our third nickel conference at Blackstone. We started our lives as cobalt explorers and then we moved into nickel because of our relationship with our South Korean partners. Um, and we went and purchased this little nickel mine in Vietnam that a lot of people hadn't heard of. And now we're embarking on what we believe will be a globally significant nickel refining business in northern Vietnam. And it's all driven by that movement towards high nickel cathode. Um, we, through that relationship with the South Korean end users, they were the ones that said to us, okay, stop exploring for cobalt right now, go and find a nickel mine. We actually had a good look at Long at the same time as you, Dave. Um, we think this one's better. Um, it's much bigger. Um, we, want some, we wanted something with scale and um, we think we've got a district scale, world-class nickel sulfide opportunity, um, but we're going to push it into a downstream refining business for the downstream products for the lithium ion battery. So you can see there, as an industry, we need to find, um, discover, develop 1.5 million tonnes of nickel to feed the, 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 the demand that's coming. Um, and that's no mean feat. As an industry, I think we're up against it. Um, but I think it's a challenge that we need to, we need to all step up to, and um, particularly for the benefit of our children and our grandchildren. And to put that in perspective, the largest uh, nickel players there in, in the industry, um, the largest one is Norilsk, and they're only producing just under 250,000 tonnes, so, um, and we need 1.5 million tonnes per annum. So um, we're, we're looking to be a major player in this space. Um, we're looking to be in the top five, um, and, and we'll show you today how we're going to do that. But even that's not really a dent on, on the demand that's coming, you can see um, from the the lithium ion battery. Because of this movement towards the NCM811, which Alex talked about earlier, so it's a nickel cobalt manganese of 811, um, they're actually pushing even further than that. I remember when I first met my Korean friends, I asked them, would you ever um, engineer out the cobalt and the lithium ion battery? They said no. Um, I asked them that recently, they said, yep, we're already onto that. So cobalt will become less and less of a, a component um, and nickel uh, will be the, the dominant uh, metal required. And we are well positioned in northern Vietnam. Um, we on the doorstep of all the major players. So this is a this is a industry that's built around the major players being China, South Korea, and Japan, and we're very well positioned in northern Vietnam, uh, right, right on the doorstep of all these major players. And this is what it's all about. And this is the reason why we went to Vietnam. We've got the largest hydropower plants in Southeast Asia right on our doorstep near the mine. The mine is already hooked into the hydro renewable power. So you want to be looking for low zero carbon uh, fossil fuel replacement. We want to be looking at electric mine equipment. Um, we're, we're in the electric mine consortium with some of the major players in the industry. So we're taking this very seriously. We are aiming to start at zero carbon, um, not moving towards zero as everyone else here is probably trying to do. We're going to start at zero um, and we're going to have a commitment to, to highest corporate commitment to ESG. Um, and it's all about vertically integrating the value chain as well. So, so taking the nickel from the ground all the way through to these, these batteries and, and vehicles as close to the mine as possible. And we'll talk to you today about how we're going to do that. Um, well positioned uh, with a market cap of around 150 million today, cash of uh, around 13 million dollars at the end of the quarter. So well, well funded for the next phase of the studies. Some very supportive shareholders. Uh, one particularly out of Germany, Deutsche Balaton. They've been with us through the whole journey. If it goes down, he just buys more. He's an amazing shareholder. Uh, Echo Pro there. So that's the largest cathode manufacturer in the world as our major shareholder. They have a representative on the board, Mr. Jung. Um, we've also brought in Fidelity recently. That's one of the major uh, institutional investors in the in the space, and um, also a, a major shareholder of groups like IGO. Um, board of management with a strong position as well, and finally getting some analyst coverage. Um, so we've got some of the big big names in the broking industry now have initiated a coverage. Um, it's taken a long time to get them on board, but um, some good price targets in the order of a, a dollar and up to a dollar ninety. So 
So yeah, um, what, well, I used to be an analyst and I think they call that a, a multi-bagger. So um, get on board. Uh, so today we'll talk about the two parts of our business. We have the upstream business unit, which is the mine, and we'll talk about the, the exploration and all the excitement around that. But really it's, it's this downstream business that sets us apart from all of our peers. We're looking to produce the NCM 811 product. So we're going to take concentrate from our mine. We're going to take concentrate from our third-party fee providers, um, our partner Trafigura. Uh, there's a good chance we might see a bit of uh, your nickel there, Victor, coming from our, our friends at Trafigura. So we're going to bring nickel from Australia, Canada, Africa, all around the world into this, this globally significant refining business. And we're going to do it with the lowest power costs in the industry and some of the most competitive labour costs as well. So you can see here, that we're looking to produce the first stage of the lithium ion battery, which is the NCM811. And then a lot of people don't realize that that's actually more important and, and the, all of the battery end users are more focused on nickel at the moment than lithium, which is the next stage. So you combine the NCM with the lithium to produce your cathode. But you can see this is very scalable. As long as we can get hold of concentrate from um, a lot of the groups here that are out of offtake come to the booth. We're more than happy to have a chat because we need the nickel because we've got the partners on the other end that need the nickel. So just on the upstream, we're drilling out what we think is a world class. It's been used a lot today. Um, we've got very similar geology to the Julemar complex. It's it's a, um, a big nickel sulphide district. There's a lot of drilling going on. We've got eight drill rigs operating. We, at times, we've had up to 13, 14 drill rigs. So we're just getting all that into our pre-feasibility study for the upstream business and then moving into restarting the existing concentrator and then, and then feeding our concentrate into our downstream business um, in 2024. Um, so the previous owners sunk $136 million into the infrastructure. So we've got a great little concentrator there ready to go. We're going to need a bigger one. So we're building a second concentrator for our disseminated ore bodies. So you can see they, these are all the targets that we're drilling out. The ones in yellow are the first five of the 25 targets that we tested. All five of those are going to be mines. It looks like we've got two op big open pit mines and three small high-grade underground mines. The, the undergrounds are massive sulphide veins and the uh, open pits are big disseminated ore bodies similar to the Mount Keith mine in Western Australia. So this is our first one that we drilled out. That's about 60 million tonnes at around 0.5% nickel. So it's a, it's a large bulk tonnage open pit mine. We've done some pits on that and, and, it, and it pulls all the way through down to that, the bottom of that intrusion. So there's not much left behind, very good strip ratios. This is another open pit disseminated ore body. Uh, this is a bit smaller, but um, there's still going to be probably 5 to 10 million tonnes there. So um, it still adds to, to the mine life. This is one of our high-grade underground mines. These, these are very similar to what we mine in Cambelda, but we've got the uh, copper, cobalt, platinum, palladium, gold, rhodium, osmium. Uh, there's plenty of metals in there. So they, they allowed us to drop the nickel grade because we've got so much in the byproduct credits as well. So we can bulk these out, take a bit of the disseminated in the hanging wall and really bulk these out. So this is, these, some of these areas are running 15 metres wide uh, for an underground opportunity. Uh, this is another one. So there's, yeah, there's nickel everywhere. There's 25 massive sulphide targets outcropping at surface, undrilled, untested. We've, we've bought our own EM, EM equipment. We have two geophysics crew working through the belt. It's going to take years to unlock this district. So you can see there's, a, there's all the, the targets behind us. So we've got the first five coming into the PFS and then another 20 behind it. And just today we announced this collaboration with the Vietnamese government. Um, 10 kilometres away, outside of our tenure, we're, we're looking at the Chimvan uh, target. I'm going to nickname it the, uh, the Big Bertha because that Ban Phuc is 280,000 tonnes of nickel. The, the Big Bertha Chimvan is 15 times the size. So it's a mag feature. It's early days. My geos will kill me, but I think it's, it's going to be nickel. Um, we've got so good soils on, on surface. We've got the Big Mag feature. It's there's going to be some nickel there, and it's 15 times the size of, of our, our main flagship asset, which is Ban Phuc. So have a, have a close eye on, keep a close eye on that one because that's, uh, that could be the future of the company right there or one of the other companies that might like it as well. <laughs> 
Um, so we're going to feed. So just on on the, on these tr different feed sources, we have the big disseminated uh, open pit mines. We've got these high grade, massive sulphide vein underground mines. We've got our friends at Trafigura who probably give us some of Victor's Con, and and they're the largest trading house in the world. They see the opportunity that we're bringing, and they're very keen to get this uh, up and running. That's all I'll say on that. <laughs> Um, and anyone else out there who wants to be a part of this, more than happy to share the upside. So we're not greedy. There's some big numbers here that we're going to throw around. We're going to share that with whoever brings some con and whoever brings um, the, I suppose, funding. And that'll be the major players in the industry being those um, uh, lithium-ion battery and electric vehicle companies. Uh, so this is our base case. We had to water it down a bit for the ASX. Um, this is our base case. The, the actual case is probably going to be double this, but we'll start with this. 43,000 tonnes per annum, $2 billion MPV. Good return on investment, so it's only a $500 million capex, IRR of 67%. Some of the best economics you'll see in the industry, and we used a very conservative premium for the NCM 811 product. And this is what makes it such an uh, interesting opportunity. So we've got, we're well positioned. This region has had $20 billion invested from Samsung and LG, two of the major players in the industry. We've now got VinFast, who is a local Vietnamese electric vehicle company, building electric vehicles at the port city down from the mine. We have rail all the way down to the mine. VinFast is looking to um, IPO on the NASDAQ with a $60 billion IPO. I can tell you that we're a long way from building electric vehicles down at Quinana. This is happening today, right on our doorstep. So have a have a close look at this opportunity. This is this is unprecedented what we're seeing here. There's a there's a good reason why um, a lot of interest, not so much on the on the ASX, but out behind the scenes on this particular project. And it's driven by this ability to purchase nickel concentrate at around, let's say, 75 80%, and we'll, we'll produce the NCM81 product, which trades at 20 to 40% premium to the LME price. So it's a 120 to 140% payability on a product that we can buy for 75 or 80 So it's basically like buying or making hamburgers. The, the meat patty is the nickel. We add a bit of cobalt and manganese, which is the lettuce and the tomatoes, whack it together, sell it for a significant premium to what we bought those um, products for. And it's through a tried and tested technology, so it's pressure oxidation, very similar to what Darren's doing in, um, in Brazil. So we're taking the con, um, we're leaching it, um, solvent extraction. This is all tried and tested technology used all through the industry. And then we're converting it into that final product. And that's where we'll probably bring in some partners to help us, but potentially might not need to. Uh, so you can see this downstream business is driven by that premium and also the payability. So as the payability goes up, the premium goes up. So there will always be a margin there and we're very confident of that because we're talking about a product that is a premium product to the inputs. So the inputs being nickel, cobalt and manganese and the premium being 20 to 40%. So the demand that's coming suggests that this will, will continue to be the case and so um, we're happy to pay a little bit extra and we'll show you on this Next slide. So the, the the premium has traded between 20 and 40 percent over since it's been in uh, recorded. So you can actually go to the uh, Shanghai Metal Market today, metal.com, and you can see the NCM 811 price. It, it's about 40 percent premium at the moment. If we whacked in today's price, we're looking at a 3.5 billion dollar downstream refining business. We're conservatively saying 20%, which is the lowest it's ever traded, and that's driving the $2 billion MPV. Because of those strong margins, the competitive labour costs, the renewable hydropower, I'm happy to pay a little bit extra than BHP. I'll pay 5 or 10% above market. Um, so anyone out there who's talking to BHP, come to me, I'll pay, I'll add another 5 or 10% on top of that because I'm still getting a 2 or $3 billion MPV on those um, increased payabilities. 
So we've completed the pre-feasibility study. That's where all those big numbers were. There's a lot of technical detail behind that, um, which I, I wouldn't even try to get into. Um, I'm, I just dig rocks up. But we've got some great chemical engineers in the team um, who have put, pulled that together. We're now moving into the definitive feasibility study, very close to announcing our engineering firm for that, um, one of the bigger names in the industry. We're piloting as well, so it's all, all happening at the moment. We bring in our partners through that pilot plant phase, so our feedstock partners, happy to go, go and test your con if you want, but also our downstream partners to get the exact right chemistry mix. Some want an 811, some might want a 9.5.5. So there is, there is changing mixes all the time, and that's why we have to bring those partners in during that pilot plant phase. Then we lock in the off-takes, joint ventures, the final investment decision, and we start building uh, ne uh, next year, later next year, to produce in uh, the NCM product in 2024. That's it, and we've got notes. I hope you all took lots of notes. <laughs>